Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Rodrigo Rubatan, and uh, I'll try to be fast so everyone Ari can go lunch. Uh, if anyone wants to download the slides uh, to follow up while I'm talking, just scan this QR code. Uh, so, uh, we'll talk about uh, data science in Ruby, if we can do it, if it's fast, if we should use it, and when to use it. So, uh, anyone here who works with uh, data science, uh, data scientist, uh, uh, data engineer, anyone writes any application that uses data? I thought this time I would see some hands up. <laughs> so, uh, let's start uh, defining what is data science. Uh, this is a tricky question and every company has a different uh, definition of that. Uh, some people say that data science is the process of extracting meaning and interpreting data. Uh, others define as the usage of statistics and machine learning to clean and manipulate data. Uh, also, there are people that say that any usage of a computer software to collect, clean, and manipulate data is data science. And it's also a cool name to the combination of data mining and business intelligence that are other buzzwords that have been around for at least 20 years, uh, probably more, but it, they use it to have more expensive tools and cheaper uh, workforce. I prefer now that the tools are cheaper and the professionals are more, uh, receive more money. <laughs> So, uh, can Ruby do data science? Uh, the quick answer is yes. Uh, we have uh, libraries for everything that's needed for data science, uh, but we'll need to dive a little bit more in that because uh, as with any software-related question, the best answer is it depends. So, uh, in Ruby we have uh, libraries to integrate with other tools like R and Python. We have data manipulation libraries, gems to uh, do distributed computing, uh, gems for data structures, uh, like Daru, we'll see uh, uh, sam samples for every of these groups uh, later. We have some uh, ready-made data sets like the Iris data set that was being used for uh, Sharty. Uh, we have statistics libraries. We have uh, data visualization libraries. Uh, libraries for interactive computing and uh, some things are really good and some things are not that good for example some libraries that uh, some, li some gems work together some don't uh, some uh, there are gems that do the same thing, one is really fast, the other is not, and we'll need to define exactly what we want to do and how to integrate things, and sometimes that's uh, a tricky problem. So, uh, interactive computing is, uh, for example, using Jupyter Notebook, while you can, where you can just write um, what uh, some code sample, execute it, update, use the result below, and 
show it to anyone that uh, uh, might be interested in that or use it to uh, evaluate data, clean up test again, update your code. It's really useful for uh, any data science related code and also to do uh, some teaching. Uh, I started using Jupyter Notebook for some uh, small Ruby classes too. Uh, we have libraries to integrate uh, Ruby with Python, for example. Uh, I found, found out about PyCall that was created by Kenta Murata, if I'm not wrong. Uh, it allows you to write uh, any, uh, to write code in Ruby using Python modules as if they were uh, any Ruby library. It's really good and really fast and solved a lot of problems for me. And there are a similar uh, library for R, but I haven't tested that before yet. We have uh, libraries for data manipulation. This uh, Kiba library uh, helped me a lot in a project that where I had to uh, collect data from five different uh, sources, including databases and files and web, and it help, helped to do that in a clean and declarative way. Uh, so also helped me find bugs in that integration easier. Uh, and Jungler is uh, a similar tool to integrate many ETL uh, jobs at once. We have uh, tools for distributed computing, but here the libraries start to the, thing, the things start to get ugly because Apache Spark is a really great project, but both uh, integration libraries for Ruby and JRuby uh, haven't seen a commit in the last three years. So if you are already using it, great. If you are starting something new, it's probably not the way to go because uh, there are some open bugs and nobody maintaining the projects. Uh, we have libraries for many different data structures. Uh, for example, Daru, that's the implementation for data frames in, in Ruby. Uh, data frames are the I think most important uh, data format for data science. It allows you to uh, clean and manipulate data very easily. We have NUMU and Array, that's an, and Matrix that are very similar libraries, uh, but uh, Array is really fast uh, and doesn't work re really well with Daru and Matrix has some performance issues. Uh, the, there, are, there is a bug open in their backlog for the last two years about this performance issue, and it works really well with Daru. Uh, we have some uh, ready-made datasets in our datasets project with many data sets that's collected from uh, the R language. And we had have the red data sets with a growing collection of uh, data sets available to use for samples and to use in any application. We have many libraries for statistics. Uh, this 
none of these lists is complete. There are just uh, more, the more important libraries are the ones that I have uh, tested. <coughs> uh, we have the RB uh, GSL, that's the uh, interface for G, uh, GNU specific scientific library. I think this is one of the most used scientific libraries in the world. And I really like the enumerable statistics that was also written by Kenta Murata. It's a really fast uh, way to do some simple, simple uh, calculations on any enumerable, like an array or uh, an active record results. We have some, uh, lots of libraries for data visualization. I need to add uh, Sharty to this list now. Uh, we have an um, implementation of Matplot library. Uh, Mathematical is really cool for uh, rendering uh, calculate, math calculus. And we have Daru view that's was my go-to uh, visualization library because it's integration in da integrated in Daru and you can use it to render the results in uh, Jupyter Notebook or in any web application. It's e really easy to use. And Daru Plotty uh, is really well integ integrated, integrated in Daru too, but I just used it in Jupyter Notebooks. So, uh, what's the current state of uh, data science in Ruby? Uh, we have um, a big uh, advantage and a big problem at the same time. Uh, in Python, all the uh, data science e effort is around the SciPy project. In Ruby, we have three different projects with three uh, different approaches. Uh, most of the uh, data science tools are under the SciRuby project, which has many N-matrix-centric gems and it has the Daru project for data frames, uh, GNUplotRB, StatSample, and many other libraries. We have the Ruby Numu project uh, with uh, NRA-centric gems, uh, and lots of uh, similar uh, implementations like GNUplot, uh, in Numu, GNUplot on SciRuby, an array and, and matrix. Uh, we don't have, uh, uh, we have a, a small number of developers working on data science in Ruby and the, the effort is divided. Uh, so because of that, the Red Data Tools project was created. Uh, their idea is to be uh, interoperable between uh, the other two. Uh, they are uh, created to uh, have uh, Apache Arrow as the backend, what I think is a good idea because the next version of Pandas will also use it uh, as a backend. And it has some uh, uh, red arrow and matrix to read and matrix data, red arrow, numu, and array to read uh, and array data. So today you can use it to uh, interface the data model of one and project with the other. Uh, the big problems I see here are that, for example, and matrix has this performance problem. Uh, for at least 
two years. Uh, NR, uh, NRA is way faster, but you can't use, use it with Daryl. So if you are doing data science in Ruby, you probably should go with the SciRuby project. Uh, but if you are doing just scientific computing, uh, the Ruby Numo project is probably best for you. And the Red Data Tools project is um, a, a kind of new project and it has uh, a small problem now that it doesn't have data manipulation libraries, just uh, input and output. Uh, it will probably be solved with time, but that's the current state. So, doing data science in Ruby is hard. Uh, we have the tools. Uh, some tools work really well, others uh, not so well, and we lack uh, documentation because there are not many users and not many developers because there are not many users. Uh, there are not many developers because there aren't many developers, there aren't, aren't many users. So, uh, I think everyone agrees that uh, the current uh, crown jewel of data science is Python. Uh, and we have mostly the same functionality in uh, Ruby 2. Uh, in Python, when you start learning data science, the two first libraries you learn are Pandas and NumPy. In Ruby, we have Daru and NMatrix to do mostly the same thing. They have uh, almost all the same features. Uh, not as much documentation as the Python version, but uh, uh, the SciRuby project has a, a decent amount of documentation. But I decided to do uh, some testing. And I created a Jupyter Notebook to d simply uh, do a run a sum with a big number of uh, random numbers. I started with uh, 50,000 and it was enough for uh, the results that I was looking for. Uh, the, re the results will not be exactly the same with different numbers of, or different operations. And I think this is probably the worst case scenario so I did the, mostly the same operation with N matrix, and the Ruby version took uh, 0 0.3 seconds to run, while the Python version took uh, 0 0.003 second, seconds to run. So just doing uh, a sum of 50,000 numbers using N matrix uh, is 100 times slower than using NumPy. Uh, so I did some tests with pandas, created a simple data frame uh, with the same size, uh, 50,000 numbers with random data and got the median of the first uh, column of the data frame. And it took uh, 708 microseconds. And I did the same, mostly the same operation with Daru, uh, with what took me more code, probably because I'm not really good with Daru, and I didn't found that many documentation to uh, to clean up the code. But the the operation was simple enough to measure the results, and this is not as bad as the first sample. Uh, but now it's just 
57 times worse do the same operation uh, with Ruby. So uh, it's possible to do the same operations, but I think that 57 times, uh, 57 times slower code can be a problem in production. Sometimes it's not. Uh, depending on the amount of data you are do, uh, were uh, sampling, depending on how many times you do uh, something that takes uh, a part of part of a second or takes 30 seconds in produ production, sometimes a day is not a big problem, but if you are doing it lots of times, uh, this performance difference can be a big problem for you. So, um, I think that Ruby and Ruby on Rails are way better to write business web applications. At least I like to write uh, web applications in Ruby. I do it in all, all the day. And we can even do some really good machine learning with Ruby, but it's subject for another presentation. And uh, I defined it last year that my objective is to help Ruby developers to use the best tools for each job so they can solve hard problems with less bugs and have more free time because I like having lots of free time. <laughs> and that was the time that I found uh, PyCall. And it's really cool, uh, really cool library that's a wrapper around uh, libpython.so. Uh, I, uh, I use it mainly to uh, call uh, Python modules from my uh, web applications to uh, isolate what I, uh, most of my business code is in Ruby and most of the data science code is in Python because I found it to be faster and uh, it has more documentation with, with what help, helps me a lot. Um, this is a code sample of uh, Ruby code using NumPy, for example, but you can use any uh, Python module, you just import, uh, use PyCal import, PyImport, and you keep writing code as if it was Ruby. Works really well, and I'm not telling you to write all the uh, data science code in Ruby using the Python libraries that probably is not a good idea. I haven't tested, but uh, any uh, interface code needs to uh, transform data from one model to the other, and it can be a, it has a cost. But um, my opinion today is that Python is way better than Ruby for data science. Uh, Ruby is better for uh, web and business applications. I have lots of things in Ruby that are not web related to. So. And I tried three different integration patterns. Uh, first thing I tried was just pointing uh, both applications, the Ruby one and the Python code to the same database. It works uh, writing twice the database uh, layer uh, works, but is not ideal. I tried exchanging data through JSON, but it's slow sometimes. And my uh, preferred option today 
is to just uh, use Python to write the data science code, wrap it into a Python module, and uh, call it from the uh, Ruby web application, where I just <coughs> pass the data, my the same active record models, uh, using PyCall, get the result, and render it in uh, the reports for the business uh, and I think this is the most important slide in the presentation it has uh, pointers to really good sources the first one is uh, RubyConf 2017 presentation uh, from Kenta Murata where I found uh, PyCall. There are uh, big data analysis in Ruby. The third one from Dan Carpenter is really good too. And the last three, uh, these Ruby machine learning resources ha is a really good and complete list of mas machine learning uh, sources and these uh, Ruby data science resources has list, a list uh, a compiled list of many different uh, documentation doc documents and libraries and presentations on how to do data science in Ruby and the last one is the link to the PyCal project So, uh, that was it. Uh, if anyone have any questions, we can try to answer. If uh, you want to talk to me later, you can scan this QR code with my contact information. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>